Today, you get exactly what you asked for, more content. Flying around different systems within the Elucid galaxy, I found myself entering a completely new expedition. From new planets with giant creatures that wanted to eat me day in and day out, to finding my soon-to-be home on my first ever paradise planet, and coming across some of the best S-rank multi-tools in the game. I even managed to build myself the most beautiful base high above this outpost. BT Dubs, if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to drop a like and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Without further ado, I spent two 200 days in no man's sky and here's what happened. With it being my very first day back in over a year, learning the basics was my go-to. I had to remember how to actually fly the ship, what it took to refill the warp drive, and somehow being completely unfazed by the new orbital update. I mean, just look at that freaking thing. The space stations were completely new and changed in so many ways. Even with how it looked inside with how spacious it all felt, for whatever reason, it didn't hit me just yet, but it would later on. If that wasn't enough, imagine being able to build your own spaceship in No Man's Sky. By far one of the coolest updates so far. As I did a bunch of roaming around the different parts of the space station, I found myself looking into my multi-tool, making sure to check out the different shops and jumping back into my ship for a little trip within the galaxy map. On day 101, I found a new planet covered with mostly water. Oh! Why does this planet have a rainbow? You see that? Prepping to land safely, I had my multi-tool out, testing out the terrain manipulator, terraforming land in different ways, and noticing the plant life to animals on this rock. I get it, you've probably seen this a million times already, but what you haven't seen yet was me boarding the anomaly. More specifically, finding an option to venture towards a black hole. I mean, what? Ooh, ask for the Atlas Station coordinates or ask for the black hole coordinates. Save me, gut me tells black hole. Black hole, please. Oh, yeah, that's that's the black hole. Holy crap. Ostentin system. What is happening? Fetching the recent user activity. Logging in as an administrator. Success. Execute hijack script. Commencing autopilot to remote destination. Sure. I wasn't done there, though. Apparently, if I just played the game as it came, I would continue to find new things waiting for me around each twist and turn. What I really wasn't a fan of was being attacked in space. That was the last thing I needed or wanted. I am inside the ship. I spawned in the ship. I literally am inside this ship. I'm inside the Sentinel Capital ship. Uh, okay, we're just in it. Like, am I just, am I good here actually? Yeah, I might be good here. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me out. Oh, I died, I think. Day 102 here and I found myself distracted again. After a few warp jumps, I managed to come across another dissonant planet. The catch was, these planets now had certain weather effects. What is happening? Am I going crazy? No, there's actual stuff. Like there's bats and then there's like a lot of weird other stuff happening. These purple crystal planets seem to have some sort of electric explody balls of doom. Something else I did much later into my playthrough was building a real base. This is when I tried to use roofs as floors, slowly realizing that wouldn't work and finding a way to make things look pretty. Lastly, I added storage box that needed power and decided on a new picture for this beautiful base of mine. What I should have known better with day 103 here was not all bases I had built previously were finished. This one in particular just had the base computer and nothing else. No portal, no teleport, nothing. Thankfully, even while I was panicking, I did remember there being a portal back inside the anomaly. So it was time to fly back into space and get this booty to where it really wanted to go. To the first ever base I had set up and to check on the little dudes that were manning the station. Continuing into a new day here, I was farming more oxygen and tritium. This finally allowed me to build what I needed back at base. The light sources and any extra storage for later. Making sure everything was powered up and working. As I finished up with that, I found a new point of interest and in search of a harmonic seal. Oh. Oh, this was that thing. Remember how we were like being taken by overpilot or autopilot going through the black hole and then we somehow figured that out? I don't trust this head. But these coordinates seem my only clue toward understanding what is trying to communicate. They who returned explore the extracted coordinate. What I found out next was a pretty sad sight. A sad little robot hanging on with just a thread of life. Asking me to repair and find a way to fix the ship. Let me tell you, this bad boy was about to be mine. Ooh, look at that new ship. Look at it. Ooh. Next on my to-do list, and with it being day 105, I was aboard the Anomaly again, looking to make as many purchases to upgrades as I could. Like I said, a base was coming and I just didn't know when. Funny enough, this would actually take me the better part of two or so days looking for those paradise planets, thinking back to what everyone mentioned and how peaceful they were. 
The first of many planets I visited was a tropical one, though to be honest, seeing the entire planet covered in a weird purple hue just wasn't for me. Next, I took a bit of a gamble, jumping into a completely random system again, only to find a big ship full of death and lasers, something called the Dreadnought and definitely looking new to the game. What the fudge? Yo, look at this thing. Approach, vector, fly, wait, what? Fly beneath? But not shields. Holy crap. Oh my god. Oh my god, there is shields. Okay, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. I wanted nothing to do with this. Nothing at all. And just a few warp jumps away, I was so much closer to that perfect planet. <gasps> Paradise Planet! Oh! Alright, we're going to Paradise Planet. It looks really dark and weird from here, but it better be good. I mean, it looks okay so far. This is actually kind of peaceful. Look at the luscious leaves and new planet, largest planet discovered. Just because, and with it being day 108, I warped to a new area, finding a radiated looking planet and building myself a nice little base. You know, in case I needed more uranium down the line, and of course I would. Turns out I also warped about 40 more times. Whoops, forgot that happened. <laughs> Whoa, oh, hello, okay, cool. Today was one for the books. I found another paradise planet and one I'd soon call home. The best thing about these types of planets was how safe they made you feel. Sure, some of them could be corrupted or have more aggressive life forms, but I was the lucky one. The plan was to simply set up a small base of sorts, adding a few decorative lights and then some fun decals. So I got a pickle, I got a bunch of friendos, and it's looking so much better. Next was getting a portal work, giving it some power with a generator and then assigning more power to my checkered floor. All I was missing now was a disco ball. While storing away some more resources, it was time for another picture. Feeling like I experienced so much already, I wasn't even close to done. Because with day 111 here, I felt the need to upgrade not only my base, but my ship and equipment. The best place I found upgrades was back inside the outlaw stations. Easy to find, but hard to upgrade majority of the time. The reason being was the amount of nanites you needed. With all that said, this was by far the coolest upgrade I managed to get for my weapon side of things. So we had quite a few nanites as you could tell, but look at all of these, these things. And now the trick about these is yes, we are spending nanites for them, which is kind of crazy, but it's a gamble. It's, a, it's just a really big gamble. You could just buy the S ranks and get a better gamble. Remember those upgrades I was talking about? Well, this was that. I got these two new things, which was the geology and the blaze javelin. So I'm guessing it's like a different type of thing. My damage was, I think 3,500, 6,000 on this thing now. Off of the upgrades alone, like that's insane. And I didn't realize it, but I have not touched upgrades ever. The one thing I truly debated on was if I wanted to bring stuff with me. I was about to venture forth into my first ever expedition. Somehow I just knew I wasn't supposed to be here. Whoa! Do you see that worm? Am I on this moon or planet? Oh my god. Oh god, 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 oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Hello? Alright, so this is a new place. Look at my person. Kinda cool. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I think the worm's gone. Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Definitely not gone. Definitely not gone. It's still here. It, okay. I thought, mmm. <laughs> Whispering egg. Oh! What the fudge? Yo, why is everything? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This is so much fun. Well, hello. Ah, oh my god. <laughs> With new repairs now needed to my spaceship, I also noticed that there was five phases if I wanted to beat this expedition. Though the hardest thing now was me trying to survive with no resources. On day 114, I finally made it to my first of many achievements, installing the advanced mining laser and anything else I could get my hands on. Knowing I had the personal refiner, I made some more upgrades within the exosuit and then worked on repairing my ship. What made this expedition twice as scary for me was realizing it was just me alone in the galaxy. Just me. An unlikely escape left the planet, baby. Guess who left this planet? Ya boy. No more worms. Cause, cause, uh, uh, station automatic repeat. Okay. 
Way to follow up a message, but there's nothing but silence. Disconnect communicator. Oh yeah, because there's no one here. So this space station, again, everything is empty. Completely empty. I'm gonna be honest, I wish, hopefully we can keep these thrusters on my guy because this thing is amazing. I love the purple look of it. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Lights out and abandoned space station. That's not good. The plan now was to warp to a new system and find a way back to civilization. Not gonna lie, that storm's pretty spooky. The best thing I thought of at the time was just getting to a distant planet, finding more resources and farming up as much as I could. The personal refiner definitely came in handy for the more advanced resources. As I unlocked the base computer in all its glory, I now had more of a direction in what came next. With most of the first parts of the phase one completed, I was on my way to the rendezvous point. I had no clue who or what was waiting for me, but all I knew is that I wasn't alone anymore, right? Even in a new galaxy and on another new planet, life was nowhere to be found. The smaller outposts were empty and so were the landing pads everywhere I went. The only life I found were certain animals running about, so all that was left to do was for me to raise a signal for the next phase. I guess you could say I definitely wasn't ready for this. The biggest reason for risking my life was lava cores. With the last milestone coming to an end for this planet, I was told to visit the anomaly again and find something new with many parts to it. So where is, oh, it's over there. All right, I'm coming, Prime Terminal. Oh, we gotta find the other plate. Cool, I know that one, nice. And then copper, I mean, copper's copper. We can find that too, that's easy. Traveling to a new system on day 121, I found exactly what I was looking for. A new planet with what seemed to be an updated No Man's Sky. Another one I missed many moons ago as well. What I made sure to do next was scan everything I came across, both with plant life and just the animals around. You aren't going to believe what I found next, okay? At this point, I was trying to figure out any way I could to save this planet to my first save file. Not only did it bring back nostalgia, but the place was beautiful. On day 123, I planned on visiting as many new planets and systems as I could, finding more life forms to scan from far off planets and looking into different types of fauna to plant life, even stuff that could kill a person. With a new planet in mind, one of the milestones I had my eye on was getting to a certain height. That and I just wanted to see what it felt like to climb one of the tallest points ever. The view was something special and like no other. Even with the fear of heights, I would do it all over again. Taking a quick trip to another planet, this one definitely had me fooled. It gave off rainbow vibes, but was stormy as heck and had some extreme weather situation going on. The real reason for the hassle was finding the right resources needed for this mind arc. With all that said and done, I raced back towards the anomaly and inserted the mind arc into its rightful place. While floating around in space as I waited for the new marker to appear, the boundary portal was closer than I thought. Am I gonna die? I don't wanna die. I don't like this. I take it back. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, legit, what am I supposed to do? Mind arc freed the stars around you, but the truth is no closer than before. I don't get it. Oh my god. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Ooh. On day 127, everything felt way too familiar. Like, to the point where I reset my galaxy and started on a new planet kind of familiar. Ooh, it's so cool. I love the music in this expedition. It really is nice. There's something so so peaceful about it. Flying high above a charred planet, things started to sizzle and get a little too hot. That's when I decided to check out what was on the other side of this planet. Let me tell you, there was no way this was really a thing. I got my first pet. It's a glowing orb. Look at that. Holy crap. Ah, <laughs> where are you going? I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Oh, the heart's going up even more. Oh, <laughs> there you go, buddy. Ooh, even food. Oh my God. <laughs> All I had left to do now was to summit a mountain of 16U. At the time, I had no idea where I would find the height, but my best bet was climbing the tallest point where I found my second rendezvous point. The only thing was, I was long gone from that jump point and trying to warp all the way back would just take too long. But that's kind of what I did. So jumping from system to system with the biggest sigh known to man, <sighs> Even now, jumping through more hoops on day 132, no one told me that I would have to face multiple worms to get to the next rendezvous point. The last thing to do now was travel through space and time, entering the void. With day 133 here, I stayed in my ship and waited for the nanites to rack up. 
It's this thing that's supposed to follow me. That's gonna follow me. That will follow me? I don't know. Nice peaceful planet right here. Except for the burning sensation. <gasps> this could be a pet too. Whoa. Hold on. Cool. I got a new creature here. I got a bunch of stuff. Look at this. Look at this little fella. Feeling unhappy? I got you, buddy. I'll pet you. Watch this. I'm gonna pet him. Or her. Don't know. And then we're gonna give you a treat. Make you even happier. I'm gonna give you another pet. Make you even happier. I feel good. I <laughs> Is this how you ride a pet? Is this? Okay. La da da, la da dee. Where are we going, baby? La da da. As the days pressed on, I was inching my way closer, looking for ancient runes on multiple planets. The next milestone had me going from planet to planet in search of deeper waters and looking to locate a crashed freighter. The problem now, and what slowly became so frustrating, was the amount of sentinels I had to deal with. I eventually ended up digging myself a little hole to escape their vision. Having the hardest time also looking for the crystal sulfide, it turned out these things were attached to different geysers, making it possible to finally build a submarine. It's also that time in the video, and if you made it this far, comment space balls down below. If you know that reference, I absolutely adore you. On day 136, I decided to take my butt elsewhere. Tired of dealing with the sentinels and not having as much water as I hoped for, this planet looked the part. I was ready to send out my little guy and the hunt was on. Submerged runes detected already? Oh my god, I'm coming for you. Whoa, it's like a jelly. Look at this. That's kind of cool. Trallium? You hear a voice, soft but insistent, growing ever louder as I linger before the ancient altar. It flows closer. The water rushing about me, demanding that I listen to its tail. We got something. But we've explored... Whoa, new item recorded the catalog. Trident Key. Today's when things got tricky. Searching for a lost and abandoned derelict freighter, I completely forgot how to get inside this thing. I didn't know it was a landing spot up top here. Oh my goodness. That would have been great to know. What happened next, I didn't expect at all. Oh, I got a fight? Oh crap, they just gave me my gun back. Everything felt like it was straight out of a horror movie. This was also another expansion added to No Man's Sky called the Desolation Update. It had everything, from blocked doors with weird goop on them, to a bunch of not so friendly turrets trying to kill me. I also found myself so lost inside this thing as it felt like a complete maze. Being able to finally taste how close I was, all I had left to do was drift out into space. With the final rendezvous point in sight, I found my way to the barren rock floating in space. Touching down with my ship and able to see the finish line for the first time in so long. Somehow, some way, I found actual people or alien life forms to communicate with. Is this an illusion? A holographic echo in the noise? Or the fragment of some lost reality? So is it true? I'm alone? Oh, whoa, that was it? All right, holy crap. The next milestone asks me to become a baker of sorts and a dang good one at that. I'm, I'm cooking. Do you see this? I'm cooking for you, buddy. So flour, yeast. <gasps> we got dough. We got dough, baby. We got dough. Oh my God, we got dough. Look at this dough edible product. Look at that. I got my bread on. <laughs> That's fantastic. What became the easiest milestone ever? All I had to do was look up into the stars. Most of what I thought about here was just how far I came and what awaited me in the remaining days. Part of me did know this expedition would come to an end, but weirdly enough, I didn't want it to just yet. All right, this is it, this is it, this is it, this has got to be it, this has got to be it. Come on now, come on now, come on. As for the rewards of what I got next, I must say, they were pretty dang amazing. That is, oh my god, look at the, oh my god, look at this thing. The Iron Vulture? Not great for like attacking and stuff, but just in general? The sputtering stall ship. What? Holy crap, there's so many cool new things. Oh, oh. <laughs> compare. So, the one we had in our other save? All right, so that is everything I'm going to be taking. All the technologies that I want or have found, the cloaking technology especially, and then just a bunch of extra random things. Finish, please. Yep, all right, let's do it. Got a bunch of units. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, we get to see the total earnings and everything? Interesting. Like, like, look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. This is nothing compared to what I... Oh, I mean, my ship is super sick. Like, is super strong and everything. Oh, it's right there! Oh my god, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This would become my forever ship. Or at least something I eventually grew to love. Upgrading the ship was easy enough. You just had to throw some more units at it. It was also time for a little switcheroo of my character. I felt like a change was needed. I'm gonna change this one up. Uh, <laughs> you know, I gotta, I have to do it. I have to do it. I love the eyes. As time went on, the little particle effects to controlling the actual ship and just the all around look felt so good. 
I don't think I ever had a spaceship like this, and let me tell you, this was probably one of the best I ever possessed. Today, however, I was met with a real challenge. Finding new locations for a better multi-tool and seeing if I could get the monoliths working. Obviously, it would take me a lifetime to find them myself, so I figured why not have my trusty guide here to help me out with my next plan of attack. Let me tell you, I found exactly where I was going next. Portal has been activated or is now turned on. How do I activate? Oh, 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 okay, that's <laughs> kind of startling. Uh, it's no different from any other structures. Activate, request this planet. Oh, activate portal. Oh, and this is where we enter the sequence. All right, so this should be the portal. I, I think. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll step through and it'll be that. But we gotta make sure we come back to this planet. And I have the anomaly, like my anomaly the space station is gonna be there. So cool. Let's go through. <laughs> My only problem now was trying to find the outpost with said multi-tool. I figured the best way to track it down was heading into the space station, looking up the destination, and finding absolutely nothing in the portal hub. Truth be told, I just had to wait a little bit of time for it to load in, but I eventually found the small outpost, okay? Sadly, after many attempts of reloading as well, I tried spawning in a different multi-tool, but apparently I did something wrong. As fate would have it though, the next day I found something spectacular. I'm at a place called Ves. It's a shampoo planet. I don't know. They use a lot of shampoo, but this planet specifically is awesome because once you find this place, you go up to this register. Look at this. Look at this weapon. Can you see that? Like he's holding, I'm holding an alien gun. Dude, I got an alien gun. Oh, ho, ho. alien freaking alien dingle dongle dungle. Hello. Look at it. Look at it. The theory of living yacht mitt. You live in your mitt. You live in your mitt. Oh, this one I maxed out. This is where I put all my stuff on it. But look at this one too. Isn't this sick? Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, look at this. It's an S. It's still a really good weapon. I think specific ones are better for specific specific things. The other one, I, the first one I showed you, is more of a mid to legend. Like it's a higher end DPS kind of weapon. I. It seems like. With it being day 148, I noticed something much later into the game. So that's how you do it. Oh my god. All this time I was upgrading my actual cargo inventory of the exosuit. I didn't know I just had to click this to actually get the upgrades for it. This would have been amazing because I've been looking for upgrades for my actual suit. Apparently upgrading my exosuit was possible and something I could have done from day one. I went from location to location, hitting up as many exosuit upgrades as I could again and looking to actually max out the inventory this time. Seeing that all my nanites were just sitting in my inventory from previous days, there was no time like the present then to not spend them on upgrades, okay? Let me tell ya, I went to the outlaw station and this was a beautiful thing. Well, not only was I able to buy a lot of upgrades and such, but I was also able to get so many oh so many more things going like honestly kind of crazy not gonna lie i got some extra shields which i don't know if they're good or great but they're far better than what i had and then i also have these now like look at this jetpacks over 230 percent uh and then we have this we have life support tanks this is the piece de resistance okay this it took me forever i was i gambled so much i gambled literally the rest of my nanites and what units i could for stuff but i found it i got it i got it i got it not only was i able to build the pulse sp uh, sp spitter pulse splitter look at the damage i saw this on reddit i was like trying to figure out how to get my damage potential to go up right because i think before i showed you it was 63 6400 <laughs> this is overkill overkill all I had to do now was test out the damage with my new weapon. All right, let's see how fast we kill these guys. You see this thing here? Oop, gone. I gotta reload. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude, I'm killing them. As the next few days went by, I found a new spot for a real base this time. Closer to a big outpost and landing pad back on my paradise planet. I'd have a nice view, I'd feel safe, and most importantly, have a wonderful base for practical use. It started with a big staircase leading around one corner and onto the next. I wasn't sure what to call this next part, but I began building upwards, finishing up with a nice open space and to let those creative juices cook. Thinking that I could just land my spaceship on the platform here, I forgot that I actually needed a landing pad for such a thing. With a new morning here, I found some more time to extend the platforms out, giving everything a little railing or two. 
Having a few near-death experiences wasn't going to roll with me. The toughest part about building a base wasn't even the building portion. It's what I wanted to build my base out of. I went with stone at first, thinking it would work as I tried to double up the height of my build. Instead, I left the stone and started using some wooden pieces, adding windows to the second floor, and then switching out my build modes to clean up the roof nicely. The inside portion of the base was easy enough, adding some windowed frames for the first level and giving everything else some elevated walls, making sure to fill in spots that needed it. This is what put the biggest smile on my face, okay? But this is what we have so far. Look at this. This is what I built, sir. Got some lights. I put the glass thing up top so there's nothing that can go in and out there. We got the... I have to power all this so we can get the automatic doors going. I got a little room over here. Got to set up some lights with some power sources. We have a landing pad here. Oh, it's... Okay, it's real snug. That's good. That looks beautiful. We go over here. We have this. Let's just pray we, we get out on the right side. Oh, it works! It friggin' works! Ooh, interceptor! Feeling like this was a great place to start, I made sure the workers inside my base were happy, remembering that there was a quest that asked me to build a few solar panels. After that, it was time to move everything needed from my little base to a much bigger and more extravagant place. One by one, I started with the base computer inside, my teleporter being next as I placed it in a new area and then immediately falling to my impending doom. It wasn't long before I built a few more storage units and with some power to go a long way. Things were looking better than ever before. Is this normally red? Oh, I think, okay, it is working. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought the red was bad. This is what I've been working on. All of my everything I've ever used, crafted, farmed up, thrown into this place. Here's all my materials, more materials that I've been using, just picking at. But instead of materials, these are like all the craftables over time I've made. So I just throw them kind of all together. These things, these are like the random stuff i either found and don't know what to do with advanced stuff this stuff is crazy like this right here this is a question mark i found this in the uh the expedition the soul fragment and then we also have something called basalt not even salt this sounds like a demon basalt he's gonna come and basalt me <laughs> Looking to begin the next major quest line, I was extremely excited for what came next. Echoes of Lost Time, or something along those lines. What I didn't know until later on was how to actually get the quest. Most of what I read online told me to continue building at my base, which was perfect for me because I loved base building. It had me going back and forth. I even managed to get my first little race car going. <gasps> Dude, could I drive it off like into the sunset here? Ooh, that's actually really nice. Holy crap. All right, baby, start your engines. Whoa, that's, yo, this, the handling is so good. Oh my God. No, 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 no. We're good. I was told to visit the skies once more, traveling to different systems and getting caught inside this rescue mission. Oh my God. It's kind of spooky, actually. Oh, okay. I really don't know what's happening. The focus now was to save the captain and make sure no one died. Hello, Captain. Captain Kirk. Oh, I don't have the language. Oh, no. Uh, must be captain of this freighter. Looks greatly relieved. They gesture as if they're welcoming aboard the vessel. Uh-huh. That's really nice of them. With a new day here, I was on my way to something very odd. I never would have guessed this to be in No Man's Sky. A full-on base. Like, uh, of people. Like a little village. Oh, first contact. Look at this. Planetary settlement detected, outpost vulnerable. Oh no. You, me, I can't even see. My screen is like frozen. Can I go inside here? Oh, this is nice. I like this one. Apply, ooh, yeah, I'll be overseer. A settlement overview, features, this is haunted or build on sand, trade. Invest in the settlement. As I worked on the settlement some more, I found that giving certain resources to builds would help the little robots or androids start working more. Everything inside this area was also automated, given that there was some time to wait, of course. Another thing the settlements had for me were quests to work on, some of which asked me to travel to other systems and look into corrupted data. What they didn't tell me, however, was how protected they would be. Eventually, I realized that there wasn't a point in trying to kill my way through. On day 167, I learned how bad the weather system could be. What? What's happening? What's happening? Why am I going up? Why am I? I'm, I, I'm, I'm flying. I'm flying. We're flying. Is that normal? I am going to die. No, 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 no. What the fudge was that? What is that? Is that a twister? Yo, I just got picked up by a twister. Oh, well, it's gone. It's moving. 
did not know that can happen. Also, my screen is like forever frozen. Having noticed a little pop-up for a quest about the Overseer, it was now my time to head on out. I was also in search of a new armor for my base. Expanding my base as much as I could, and to the extent I did, I finally received word from someone. Ooh, look at that. Trace of metal. Respond to your settlers. Okay, this is actually the quest I've been waiting for. I'm not even kidding. No one told me I would have to fight off waves of sentinels and some new ones at that. Ooh, holy crud. You see this? Oop, there we go, there we go, there we go. We got one, we got one, we got one so far. A trace of metal, this is it. Receive the anomalous broadcast. Let's do it. Oh my goodness, finally. See what you can find, then come to the anomaly. I have to know more. Looking to figure out what all of this was about and what just happened, I had to meet up with an old friend, an engineer of sorts. All right, so we gave you that speak with the traveler iterations. Afterwards, there was a few more people I was told to speak with, gathering any information I could on these new sentinels and how to stop them. This is when I met my sentry buddy. Oh, hello. Look what I summoned, the sentry. Okay. Investigating new coordinates on day 171, I found the jackpot. I was now given the ability to do something epic and build my first ever Gundam looking robot. Alright, summon. Woo! Hello! Holy crud, you keep scaring me. Jeez. Alright. We got Minotaur slots. Sure do. Oh! Oh, oh, oh my god. Okay. Holy crap. Look at me go, man. Look at us. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, this new piece of tech was the biggest of the bunch, and it slowly had me building one upgrade after the next. My journey had me traveling to a new planet. Looking into a new console for blueprints, I could copy them to the sentry. Everything was going well until I set off all alarms, bells, and whistles. I would have to trust and bond with my little sentry bot. This couldn't have been a better sight. My little race car and iron giant just sitting there. Gosh. I did figure out a way to store all my extra power coming from the solar panels. Having these batteries placed and wires set up, this was the perfect thing I had going. Oh my god, do you see this? I just realized what we're doing for this thing. We're upgrading the parts. It's like a Gundam or Bionicles thing. In the next few days, I was working on something that would provide my giant minotaur with AI. No clue what that entailed, but I was really excited. Target is... oh, it's over there. What? Oh, oh, it's moving. Oh, it's moving. Oh, it's really big. Oh, it's really big. It's really, really big. It's really, really big. It's really, really big. It's so big. It's so big. It's so big. It's so big. It's gonna touch me. A choice of metal. Defeat the sentinel walker to retrieve its brain. Defeat it? Oh, I could do that. Dude, I could do that. I'm gonna kill it. Look how much damage I have. Dude, I am smoking this thing. Oh, let's go, baby. I was scared and then I wasn't. I wasn't scared. Are you looking at me funny? kill you too. Having this new brain in my pocket felt way too weird, like I needed a baggie or something. It turns out after having the brain and returning back to the anomaly, and with all the information gathered about what to do next, one word. Crimson. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, cool, this is it. Okay, it's one of those, you go into the void of space and we got it. Oh, 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 oh. Messenger of the Atlas? Whoa, look at this thing. Holy crap, the Atlas Beacon drifts through space, impossibly silent and impossibly loud. It knows I'm here. Okay, I'm gonna hack ya. Jept Esgen. Oh, wait, wait, we don't have the words. Um, so we have endless reality is, 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 is over. Is endless. Yeah, I know. Rare item found, radiant brain. Oh, the radiant brain. My Minotaur was about to become the baddest boss known to man's sky. Dun, 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 dun. Look at it now. We got the full frame and everything. Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, it, yeah, it'd be better if I did this. Then I could really see it. Look at that thing, man. It's beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. oh, whoa, whoa. Where'd you come from, buddy? Oh, there's a brain in it. There's a brain in it. Look at that AI autopilot active. Holy crap. I just realized. Oh, I got a teammate. Yo, we kicking butt out here. Hold on, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Play laps, what you got for me? Is delighted by the transformation of the Minotaur. There, Minotaur is not robot machine anymore. It is friend. Or not friend. They can choose. So glad you agreed to help. The last piece of the puzzle was freeing the sentry from the hive mind. Is this what I'm supposed to be fighting? I feel like it is, but it also isn't. Hold on. I gotta free your mind like Neo. Or Morpheus did for Neo. 
Boundary node exposed. Ooh, we were even better erasing it. All right. We did so well. We saved everyone. We got all the pieces built into our new Sentinel. Oh, was that it? We finished the trace of... Oh. From here on out, I was a free man or free space man, ready to tackle anything I wanted and to roam the galaxy. I did decide on something so special and quite literally out of this world. This first quest for some Quicksilver had me helping out a fellow spaceman. This man has horns. You know what it reminds me of? Loki. Holy crud. Like Loki, it reminds me of Loki. Looking to repair their ship and send them off happily. As I had the first one done, I was curious to see what other goodies awaited me back on the anomaly. You could get a cape in this game? A tentacle cape? Oh my god. Not as a void. Oh my god, this is what we needed. This is what we needed. Holy crap. Oh my god, oh my god. The shell is tough and leathery and it twitches when touched. Faint tapping can be heard from coming within. From time to time, it appears to sing. So when you buy one of these void eggs, apparently that starts the quest line of, I think it's called like living ship or something. And it starts that so we can go get a, an actual living ship. What did take me a good couple of days again, and what truly annoyed the heck out of me was scanning for certain minerals on a certain planet with a certain amount of things this game wanted for me. I spent actual hours looking for different sizes and shapes of rocks to minerals. I don't know why I was supposed to do this, but the only way to get to the next one was completing this quest. I also highly recommend you avoid this quest at all costs. I was also on the lookout for three different types of hotspots. Having an upgraded visor gave me the upper hand, but man was I just thinking to myself, how much I'd rather be chased by giant worms again or fighting off hordes of weirdos. Finally, this was my time to shine. Another quest, but one that wanted me to collect larva cores and 15 of them. Easy enough, and the planet I would visit for such a thing had a lower gravity, so it made jumping and hopping around the entire place much more enjoyable. Just before getting into the thick of it, I had a bit of time to spare and go and clear out this gun outpost. My armor was adamant on leaving no survivors behind, so I agreed almost immediately. What threw me back a little bit as we landed here, because my minotaur jumped out of nowhere and started shooting all the sentries around. I did manage to blow my way through the front door, gathering all the blueprints required, and then digging myself a nice cozy little hole while the iron giant went ham on the robots. The armorer was quite happy with how successful things went and even asked of me to do more for him. Though I was onto bigger and better things now, getting much closer to the living ship questline. Still having to wait for a little bit, I had a few minutes to spare. Turns out I would actually need the extra time because of the random fighter ships that came out of nowhere. These baddies would not leave me alone, so it was time to waste them in space. While working on a new quest, I found a little wrecked ball claiming it had more freedom for me. With a new rendezvous point in sight, apparently I was so hidden as new pirates found me again. Thinking I could get closer to the marker, but realizing they would not leave me alone. It was time to waste another set of spaceships and follow the voice of freedom. Accept the invitation, you got it. <laughs> Literally, I just, I got a ticket to freedom and I'm gonna go f find my freedom. Learning how the outlaw station worked, I was meeting all sorts of soon to be friendlies, understanding that a whole bunch of new stuff was coming my way. <gasps> what the fudge is this? Shroud of freedom? Afterwards, it was time to chat with the big outlaw boss himself coming across a new passport and thinking of different ways to infiltrate the space station. Something I kept running into was the craziest thing yet. The Atlas would not leave me alone and kept poking fun when it could. All because I ended the last reality I was in. Ooh. Fate was still on my side and gave me exactly what I wanted. I want it. I want it. I think this is the quest. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think this is it. We hear you, Traveler. We're connected. Your body uh, is is of ours. Coordinates that have been registered to my system. Ooh, I gotta go find you. I'm coming. I'm coming. Having the space egg coordinates, I found my way to the planet that would have it all. What I really should have worked on was judging how far this was going to be. Apparently, the coordinates were so much further than I thought. And by this point in, heading back to my ship was out of the question. I was also wary with the wildlife on this planet. Getting much closer to what was next, I found the last point of interest. Now to decide. Almost triple the amount of time to the new resource or back to my ship for an easier ride. You could probably guess the direction I started running in. This was it, ladies and gents. Actually playing more of the game and making it to day 200 with so much content filled. So what I'm going to have to do is say... Thank you guys so much for watching, for checking out this video, for just being a part of this No Man's Sky series so far. I really do appreciate it. I can't thank you guys enough for still giving me the support that you do to this day. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. I really mean that. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video. This is Ray Pandas signing out. Bye guys. In 22 hours, maybe I'll show you a little clip of it later on. But until then, bye for now. Bye.